I'm the voice guy, Keith. I've been smoking cigars for about 20 years, and there is nothing like going to a nice cigar shop, sitting back, smoking a stick, and talking to buds. And now, I don't have to leave the house. This is In the Shadows Podcast. Lots of cigar talk, but if it's going on in the world, we'll be talking about that too. And by the way, the fellas don't shy away from controversial topics. Trust me. So grab that stick, kick back with your favorite drink, and let's do the thing. This is the In the Shadows podcast. Now your hosts, Tony the Soy Sauce Assassin, along with Albert, Martine, and Eric. Hey guys, Tony the Soy Sauce Assassin. Welcome to episode two of our podcast. And today we have Albert, Martin, and Eric with us. So we got to do this all over again and let everybody just introduce themselves so that everybody can get to know us a little bit. Today's topic is going to be all about us. So we can start with Albert. Albert, go ahead and introduce yourself a little bit. Hi, my name is Albert. Uh, I'm a member of the Shadow Smokers Legion. I'm kind of known as the Dad Joke King. So I like to tell dad jokes. Uh, yeah, glad to be a part of this. Awesome. And then we have Martin. What's going on, everybody? My name is Martin Amaya, and um, I am once famous. I used to be famous on YouTube, and uh, we're trying to start this all over again. Cool. And then we have Eric. Yes, I'm Eric. Uh, I'm one of the baby member in the Legion. The only one that really has trust in me is Albert, Martin, fuck him, and that's it. <laughs> what, why does it have to be so aggressive, like starting the second episode of our podcast? It doesn't have to be like that, okay? But yes. It's okay. And I, I don't like them either. All right, right, right. That, that's, how, that's how the whole group goes. That's how the whole group goes. Yeah, so for... For those people who doesn't know me, I'm Tony, the Soy Sauce Assassin. I'm the leader of the Shadow Smoke Legion. And, you know, this podcast is from the members of Shadow Smoke Legion. So uh, if we reference the group or something like that, it's got to be the Shadow Smoke Legion. So today we actually is w- want to talk about, you know, about us, about the group, about maybe other group that people have been on so that we can kind of get people to get to know us. All right. So. How do you guys want to start this? How do you guys want to start? Well, how did it all start? How did it all start? How did how did the group start? Let's let's start with this. What group were you in before Tim's group? I wasn't in any other cigar group. You were not? No, that was the first cigar group that I joined. Okay. Um, how about Albert? Well, so my group was like an in-person group, if you want to call it that, uh, a local lounge that I would uh, drive down the street from where I work, and I would stop in after after work. Most days, I would stop in, relax, uh, buy a stick or two, talk with the friend, you know, with people that I got to know, and I got to know the, I got to know them pretty well, very well actually. So um, it was just you kind of build a camaraderie get to know people there almost get to expect for them to be there right and that was sort of that was my group that was that was mainly my group uh even to the point where uh when i took a trip to go visit my brother uh, overseas i took a crap load of cigars so that i would be able to smoke over there and uh got my brother into it and things kind of went from there so he he jumped into cigars full bore and and uh, we started smoking over the phone. <laughs> we would get on WhatsApp and start talking to each other and and have a smoke really every Saturday morning. And then he introduced me to podcasts, not podcasts, the YouTube videos. I think it was the TNT show, Tim and Bradley show on YouTube. And he talked about cigars daily and explaining what kind of cigars that Tim was making at the time. So he introduced me to that, which kind of led me to cigars daily. 
And that's where I kind of met Tony. So I'll, I'll kind of leave the conversation at that point and uh, pass it on to one of you guys. Okay. Uh, so what about Eric? Eric, so you say you were not in any group beforehand. So did no, you, what, I was what, in my... I was in my own group called Smoke One. If you have one, with my own YouTube channel and two I see, an Asian guy be like, "Hey, it's not that hard to join us." And I message him. He's like, "You forget your ass on live." And here I am. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's he was the outcast. That was the ugliest plug I ever seen. Okay, that is the <laughs> ugliest plug, plug I've ever seen. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, before and, and, that, I was just smoking by myself, <laughs> and and a lot of us did that, right? Like before the the boom of um, cigar being on the internet, I think right. TNT Cigar was the first one to really do that kind of live show and then promote their cigars with the you know obviously Tim and Bradley, those two personality, and and they were really successful in it. They have a lot of video. I mean, aside from obviously. The few popular one, like the Tiki Torch guy and stuff like that, that was at the time. That's what everybody watched, and we talk about this uh, roughly 2017, 2018, around that time. So, yeah, I, I was doing the same thing. I was, I was literally, you know, just smoke on my own, do my own thing, and one day I just kind of stumbled upon that TNT cigar video, and I just watched it, and then I joined their live live show. I was, oh, that's that's really fun. That's really fun. Why couldn't we all do that? Right. And I think that's when at that time, there's already a divide, right? Um, the, after that show, Tim will go to his, was that Instagram that he was using? I think it was Instagram was something that he was still interact, interact with uh, like people at the Tim side and uh, Bradley would go jump on his Instagram as well and talk to people on his side. I think that's what it was. I cannot remember it completely, but I think I always joined the Tim side because I feel like, you know, his personality more resonate with me uh, rather than Bradley. Because to me, Bradley was, I don't know how to describe Bradley. How will you guys describe Bradley? Different. Different? Just I think, different. He's, I think very, he's, he's very out there. Yeah, he's, he's like that. He put on the show. He felt like that uncle that always shows up your house uninvited and just pats you in the shoulder and go, ha, 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 hey, how you doing? You know, he feels like that kind of guy, you know? And and, and at least for Asian, that was a turnoff because, like, I, I don't want my uncle to come over and just laugh, just laugh and then go, hey, how are you guys doing kind of thing, so. That's why it was a turnoff when uh, Eric joined the group because uh, he was very loud and obnoxious. Yeah. But guess who's one of the best friends now? Hmm? The what? Hmm? I never said you're my I'm best friend. Of, uh, <laughs> I'm everybody, I'm everybody's best friend now. All right, I got like a, I got a hundred something thirty members. Don't mess with me. I will get them to jump you, boy. Oh god. <laughs> oh yeah. We're going there now. <laughs> well, so yeah, and and and, wow. and after that, I think they split. Right. So Tim left first. Bradley still with TNT. Tim left first, and then he went to start Cigars Daily. Right. And I, I still remember he talked about before Cigars Daily, he wanted to, the, the thing to be called Cigars Deals Daily. And then he changed, changed to Cigars Daily. And when that happened, I don't know who came up with the idea. He started a Facebook group page called Cigars Daily Nation. Cigars Daily Nation. Yeah, yeah that's what yeah, I joined. That's the one I joined. And yeah. that's, that's why I joined Same. too. Like, you know, I was like, you know, if we can interact with Tim, that's a good place to interact. And thus we interacted from there. And which is, I think, pretty awesome. It was it was fun to talk to everybody and 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 that. And eventually, I guess a lot of cigar snobs joined the the group. And when I say cigar yep. snob, I'm not saying it in a negative way. I mean they have their own way to, I don't know, uh, uh, talk about cigars. And they were yeah, not like allowed. Take ten years to light a, light a cigar. Too. Oh no, no, no! They they are the kind <laughs> of person that will tell you is like they, when you join a cigar group, you hope that there is no stupid question. And when I say no, oh, stupid, there's always stupid question. No, there's no, always I, stupid question. No, there's there's no such thing as a stupid question. There's just stupid people asking questions. No, no, no! Like, <laughs> like you are hoping. That's true. You are hoping that you can ask any question and it would not be considered as stupid. 
Right. 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 But we have those cigar snob. Like the moment you ask the question, they'll be like, ah, why don't you just Google it yourself? You idiot. You know, that kind of thing. So there's a lot of drama going on. And there's a lot of bashing each other. There, there is. There is. There's it's quite a bit of bashing. And but not uh, everybody was like that. No, there was but I, like isn't bashing part of the fun? You know? No, because to, they, to they, some extent, they they took it to an extreme. Right. To some extent oh. it is, but when you don't know the people, when you when you're not really connected with them in a, a more personal way, then we do that in our group. It's hard to do all the sure, time. but we're also closer a closer group, right? right. Closer knit. Right. And and so that makes that makes all the difference. About how many were in the group, Tony, whenever that was kind of going down? Toward the end, I guess. Of I you think, being a part of it. I think there were like three thousand, five thousand people at the time. Right. Wow! Yeah. yeah, and we had there at that group had one mod, one mod. True, and that moderator <clears throat> really took things personally in a way. It's like he would not, he would not warn anybody, and it's kind of weird because everything he sees, he just go report to Tim, and he doesn't do anything. So the the bad thing just continue to go. It, it the the it's, it's a whole cycle of bad things going on. And I, I, you know, at the time, I was doing a lot of things, try to cheer the group up. You know, I tried to do giveaway, try to do some mm -hmm. uh, um, fun stuff. We'll see what we can do, and we do cigar trades and stuff like that. And actually, you know, actually, I'd like to say something about that, Tony. The I thought you worked for Tim when I <laughs> when I, when I came into this. I swear I did because. Because you were doing these you know, like giveaway cigars, if you know, I think if you if you showed a picture of this or showed a picture of that or answered a question, then you know you looked at the comments or whoever posted a comment, you would do a randomizer and, and give away something. And I remember you were talking about, I guess I guess you were catching some flack about why are you doing this, right? Because right, uh, and and so you were like, well. Yeah, you know, like what's in it for you, kind of a thing. I think there's some skepticism uh, to that. And here I was thinking, like you, I thought you worked for Tim, honestly, because you were you were talking about, you know, I'm doing this out of my own good will, my own good graces, right? I'm I'm offering cigars, and I, you know, look at the shipping I'm paying for, you know, for a year's worth of shipping, and and I'm not asking y'all to pay for the shipping even, right? You just send the cigar, and you know that. Back then, it was what three, four bucks to put it in a package, right? To send it to them, and I was thinking to myself, dude, why, why don't you just like let Tim? You know, don't you have an account with Tim? I think. Are, do you remember me asking you that? Yeah, I think a few people <laughs> asked me. It's like that work for Tim. I was like, no. <laughs> yeah, it's like why not just you know send the package out from the you know the little warehouse little thing that Tim's got, and then it came to, it came to then it came to find out that you. You're just, you're just the member. You're just somebody just that was member. just trying to make the work group that make the group work better. And, exactly. Uh, just and that everybody. was very impressive, and, and that that impressed me a lot that you were yeah. willing to do that. And, and um, yeah. So when you caught all the crap you did on you know from several of the members and stuff, and you know then you wound up leaving the group because of it. Uh, I was like, well, shit. You know, this is this is. Not that this is a good thing that you get a free cigar kind of thing. That's not the point. It was here's something good going on with with the with the group trying to make the group work well, and you know, yeah, I got to figure out what's going on with that. I had no idea you made a new Facebook page, and so that's why I was I was ready to jump on that pretty quick because you Same. know James James was also very much a part of that. My brother James and. I was like, "Hey, dude, Tony made a new group, man. We got to jump in on this. We got to, you know, be a part of that." Mm -hmm. So, which anyway, was that kind of which was surprising to me. I mean, at first, remember this, okay? Um, when before that happened, somebody came up with the idea to do chapters, right? Somebody came up with the idea to do chapters, and um, we were doing chapter, and I was, I was, uh, I, I ended up being the leader for the, the Eastern chapter. Right. And we were doing that live thing already. We were doing all kinds of things and tried to do fun things, do live chats. I was spending a lot of time on that. I can literally I'll try to do everybody else's time rather than my time. And, and we're doing the afternoons. We're doing doing the day. We're doing a lot of different things. And all of a sudden, you get these people that just come here to, I don't know, try to ruin people's uh, fun. 
I was yeah. like, well, you're not people, losing anything. Why do you have to come in and, and ruin other people's fun? Right? They're just being assholes just to be assholes. And in the, in, eventually, it got to a point where the, this guy started to call me names, right? Remember this? And then he started calling me that's mm-hmm. narcissistic. I'm sketchy as hell. That kind of stuff was right, going are, on. You but, are sketchy, bro. I, I don't understand why people say <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff is sketchy because I feel like cigar is a hobby where it's already very lucky for us to be able to join that that kind of hobby together and sharing some cigars is not a big deal a few bucks like you know a starbucks is a few bucks you know i can, I can spare a few bucks here and there why not so you know got to the point where i'm trying to explain to tim i'm trying to explain to that particular mod it's like you know this guy is getting on my back keep him off me and he refused to do so he refused to do so wait he, he got in your back for doing nice things? Yeah. I mean, he refused to do so to keep that guy off my back. And then right. he basically tell me just block him. He's like, you can block him and you won't see any of the comments. So I'm not going to do my work. I'm not going to do things for you and for everybody in the group while this guy is talking shit in your group and you allowed it. Right? Mm-hmm. So right. I, I, can't, I can't do that. And in the end, I think Tim called me. Tim called me up and said, hey, you know, if you're going to leave, I understand, blah, blah, blah. You know, go do your thing. And as I, I'm, I'm going to do Shadow Smoke Legion, I'm just going to do the way it is. And he's like, yeah, you have my blessing. I was like, yeah, okay, fine. So I went out to, to create Shadow Smoke Legion. Now, when I create Shadow Smoke Legion, I thought we will have a total of 20 members, period. Right. <laughs> it, started, it started out that way, right? Surprise. It started Surprise. out with about 20 right? as well. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. It, it, I thought we got to, because the, these are the, the people who were active. Right, oh, of the five thousand people, you probably have seventy people, um, that were active in the entire group. That was a- that was active. So you know, I thought that you know, for you know, if I invite somebody, it will be just be the close group of people that we can hang out with and do do stuff. And I still do my live chat and stuff like that. So, and twenty became, you know, fifty, and the next thing you know is a hundred. And I think once we get to the hundred, we. Will, we kind of start to have this rhythm going. And next thing you know, we're at 260. Remember, we're like, okay, we're at 260. Yeah. We probably need a, a mod for every 100 person. That 100 people yes, that's I in there. That. And I think Michael was the first mod. Yeah, Michael was the first mod. So we did that, and we have Sherry be the second mod. And we kept going with that. And then I was like, that's a lot of people. And it's like, you know, a lot of people, I don't even know what these people are doing. And I really don't want to end up like Tim's group where you got 5,000 people and 70 people active. Right. So, and I think, and I think that's the issue, right? When you get like 5,000 people, 3,000, 5,000 people, when, when you're anonymous, then you, you tend to be a little more liberal with how you, well, some people do. They're a little more liberal with what they say. Like they don't, they don't really think it means anything to the people they, they say it to. Well, right? there, was this, no, there was no repercussion. No, no repercussion if they do it, right? They don't get kicked out or whatnot. So, yeah. yeah. So that, that's the danger of having, a, I think, a large group like that, is that you wind up with that anonymity that, you know, the Internet has. And, and, and that's one of the things I don't get. I mean, I, I get that people have to give people shit, and that's their entertainment. But I don't get why people do that. You know what I'm saying? And, and so we did kick a few people out, and then we have the audit system, which we kind of... I remember kicked. that. Yeah, that was a huge exodus, right? We have 100-something people that was kicked. Mm-hmm. And then we end up with a curse of 150. Every time we reach curse 150. Of 150. Yeah, curse of 150. So what happened is every time we reach a number above 150, it could be 180, 190, 200. Next thing you know, we'll drop right under 150 will be about 147. <laughs> yeah, because this I mean, is the kind of a, so the kind of group that we have and there's and yes, yeah, so there's a percentage that do not participate to the maximum for sure. But there are there are there is there seems to be a, a little bit there's a core group if you want to call it a core group and I, I don't really want to say that to exclude anybody either cuz we try to be very inclusive. As oh, yeah. inclusive as people want to be, but some folks are not. They're not d- digging in as much. They might be still hanging out with people in the lounge more more than not. Right? Don't talk to me like that, man. 
Don't talk to me like that. <laughs> don't talk about me like that. What are you talking about? Sure, Why you do that? <laughs> don't call me out. Martin, you ran out invite. You sure? Shut up, Trent. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't here at the beginning. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, the beginning was was tough. We, we, right, and, fine, asshole. That's how you feel. All right. Yeah, yeah. That's, I'm just gonna listen to the podcast then. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> We're trying to tell you our history. Okay, shut up. <laughs> I'm listening. I know. And I'm just trying to chime in as a new guy. <laughs> and we, yeah, we we took off and we took off running really quickly. And we and you know me being someone that like to buy stuff based on look, we start to make a lot of swag. A lot, a lot, a lot of things. Like everything other group can do, I ask, and then we do it. Uh, that was a lot of things we did. Well, but before then, right? Before you did the swag stuff, what and what I thought was really cool is, like, we we came up with the name ourselves, right? You yep. put it out as, what kind of names do y'all want to go for? And and it was a big discussion. It was a big Facebook discussion of, what do we, you know, what do we have? And and almost any idea was 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 not was considered right uh it was toyed with played with that kind of a thing and there's been a lot of a lot of things like that the logo the name the logo swag stuff a lot of that is done by vote if you want to call it that so yeah yeah it still is like that it still is i mean if we we have Mm -hmm. anything new design i usually go with the vote uh, because I'm indecisive. If you ask me to decide, I'll just get all of them. So <laughs> I ended up with that. I think voting was the best way to go about that kind of stuff. And we did a lot of things. And and I tried to remember everything that we did um, or asked or spoke about during the past. In fact, the most recent swag that we'd make was the Legion Ring, right? Legion Ring came up in the first year. Somebody mentioned it, the Legion Ring. The first year that we, yeah, we, just, we had to sit through we had to sit through a lot of two hour videos to figure that out <laughs> that's the only problem no that they, they, it was um it was quite a bit of uh of consideration because i knew it was gonna be expensive i knew that was gonna be a big undertaking and then you know i knew that was something that i won't be doing unless we we got to a point where we got nothing else to make, and I think right now is that point. And it's like we got nothing to make, so and, and we ended up with just like, okay, let's make a ring because <laughs> I would not. So I end up making the ring with the with this uh, uh, company in Taiwan, and to make that ring, it was it was expensive, it was more than a thousand dollars, just to make one ring. So I know that you know to make the Legion ring is gonna be even crazier because now I had to make a mass amount of it. So good, uh, it's kind of good thing that we ended up only have what fifteen people, less than fifteen people needed. So that that was easier to do to deal with. But when we are doing the 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 other swag, I tend to make a hundred of those or two hundred of those, and yeah. ended up with the whole box in my house. So yeah, running a group is mm-hmm. not easy for sure. No, you, you piss people off. Yeah. Which, it, it, which is really weird. Right. I mean, and, and to be fair, that that's normal, that you have to have a cutoff at some point and, you know, you, you can't, you, you can, you churn if you keep trying to figure out how to please everybody. And it's not a matter of pleasing everybody, but it's just, yeah, at some point, the idea is you have to cut it off and move move on with, best ideas that that you could during that time frame but um you know that's that's normal but overall it's been a better solution it's, it's been a good solution for everything the uh the swag the the ideas the the meetups stuff like that those it, it's, it's there's been a lot of input it's made us yeah. it's made us feel more of like a group like you have a group of guys and girls that you talk to on a regular basis the swag is just stuff for us as members like we want it we want to show it off that's what it's all about right i'm, I'm trying to let them all and leave so yeah oh that's sure my goal. <laughs> 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 yeah, i'm yeah. gonna catch them like pokemon <laughs> yeah, guess who's the loser that puts you know lamborghini sign on their honda in the back right one of those <laughs> <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> how dare you call me a fake lambo 
<laughs> that's what it is, right? This is this is why I always make the swag just for the members. Only because number one, we make them at a loss, right? So I lose money for everything you buy, right? And that's number why you're two, sketchy, bro. What? That's why you're sketchy. Who loses yeah. money? You know. Well, because it's for the members, and I'm willing to lose money for the members. Okay, shut up. <laughs> All right. And, and and number two is that I feel kind of weird. You're wearing something that you don't represent. That's what I feel weird oh, about. My goal is to put on eBay for more. Well, you know, one of our items actually ended up on eBay. Just so you know. That's true. Yeah. That's true. So you know, I I don't like to make things for people who don't represent it. Like you know, for example. You wouldn't wear a biker jacket with a biker thing stitch on it if you're not belong to that biker group, right? Right. It's the same idea, and and the, the rest it just doesn't doesn't make sense to me, and, and that's why I I do the way that we did it. It's like I'm not trying to mass. Now, if I was to mass produce these and sell it to everybody, I'll definitely profit. I'll, I'll profit for sure, right? Because once you start making a thousand unit, two thousand unit. You definitely profit, and I think a lot of group does that to make some um, fundings for for their their groups, and and they do, and then they do make a, a good profit for that. I mean, our our group has been running on negatives for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so bad. Our group has been running negative. <laughs> I mean, it's it's true though. I mean, we we he Tony doesn't make the swag to make money. He right. doesn't do anything for the group to make money. It's just, I mean, not even break even. <laughs> it, it's because you can't, you can't break even. If you want more people to be able to enjoy something, you can't think about the cost. You got to think about what is this for? Like, for example, if you just started a, oh, a baseball club or something like that, everybody needs uniform, anybody, everybody needs that. You, you're going to end up losing some money here and there, right? You, you start looking funding outside of your group to do that, right? Like if you do a baseball club, you're looking for funding, you're looking for sponsor, you're looking for all that. Just to pay for the stuff. Now I don't want it to be sponsored, so Tony is sponsoring the group. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, get the plug. Whoever wants to sponsor us, come and try. Uh, I, I don't try want us. a sponsor. I don't want a sponsor because I, I feel like, especially for podcasts, right? If we're gonna give people we're gonna the most honest opinion, we cannot be sponsored. Because once you're sponsored, yeah, now you gotta say, you know, a lot of people. I, I, have you guys seen those um, uh, YouTube video or whatever? And it says, oh yeah, I bought, I, I review this, I bought myself, kind of thing. And 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 they they are kind of honest, and they have these. Uh, they send it to me for free, but I get to put my own opinion on it. Now that's when I start to go. Uh, I don't know because they did give you for free, and if you want to free it again, you kind of cannot yeah. go really really bad. You're kind of biased. Right, because you're already happy that you received it, so you you already inherently have a good impression of it before you get that, right? And I I don't know how other people do it, but when I see people doing sponsor stuff, that sponsorship better be nothing related to what you're doing, because if that's this, is, this is why I don't get I don't know, you, anymore. You, <laughs> For that same I reason, I got sponsored by Tony all the time, and I was like, I tell him his, his cigar stuff, but he still sponsored me, so it's okay. Did I sponsor you? I didn't know that. I didn't even know that. that whatever, whatever that was, whatever that was. But yeah, internal group. I don't know how other people do it because I don't join any other group. I spend all my time on this one group. So you know, a lot of time I ask people like, how does other group are like? You know, because there are some big groups, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, there was like a smoking yeah. ash group. There's um, obviously the cigar dojo is a like a commercial slash group kind of thing, right? I don't know if they started out as a group, but now they're more commercial than a group. And yeah, I still don't even know what they do. I think they release I mean, a lot their of their motto is their motto is never smoke alone, right? And that well, at least that's one of their phrases, I guess. They write a lot of reviews. Yeah, I think yeah. they do a lot of stuff. I just don't know exactly what they do because they, they cross over with a lot of people. They even cross over with Davidoff to release a cigar dojo Davidoff cigar. Right. That's crazy. Wow, yeah. but they and do have a lot of the, I think it's using the power of a membership and and it, I guess influence is an influencing kind of group, which they, is there's nothing wrong with that because they are they're able to they're able to get cigars made that are exclusive for their name or their brand 
which is not a bad thing. I mean, that that's kind of a cool thing to have. So it's just we're not that kind nobody, of group. That's right. Nobody would do that for us because we wouldn't be like, you suck. It's not no, good no, enough. It's not that. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure there is something involved into pitching in and pre-order and stuff like that. For example, I think C- Cigar Dojo probably has at least 50,000 members. 50,000? Wouldn't, wouldn't doubt it. Yeah, if right. not more, if not more. So if you're able to, if wow. you're able to say, if yeah, so you you don't think you can sell twenty thousand cigars? Heck yeah, you can. So you can have your, you can order a certain blend, and you can pretty much guarantee that sell of that blend, right? Yeah, you can literally go to David and says, yeah. "We have twenty, oh, we have fifty thousand members. We are we all buy cigars, and we want to cross over with you guys so that you guys can release a cigar and we'll buy it." Right. right. Hey, did we forget? Did we forget? We also have some buying power. We do, and we, we kind of do pretty well with our buying power, right? Because our, our active members yeah. are, you, are, are very open to trying new stuff, especially. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, I will buy it just me. for the box. Now, the box looks good. I'm buying it. I don't care. <laughs> Even yeah. a sweet tip. Even with a sweet tip, I don't care what it tastes like because in the end of the year, <laughs> if I don't like it, I give it away. You know, we got we got our our um, you know Christmas raffle and stuff. I give it away. So yeah. it, it's totally doable, right? So if you think about all of that, it, 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 with the group that has that many members, it's doable. However, you're going to get a different kind of group feel, right? You're going to get a more commercial feel than a family feel that we have right now. Everybody feel close. I don't know how many people feel close in Cigar Dojo or any other group. You know, I, I don't even know if any other group does kind of the, the meetings that we do. Like we did the Arizona right. meeting, we did a Texas meeting. In fact, we did a Texas one because somebody's birthday. Right. Yep. Right. So I don't know okay. if any other group does that. I mean, I think, I think I like. Go ahead. Yeah. So, so the, the group dynamic, right? And and like, and so I've I've not been a part of another group. I've 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 heard about a few other groups that I have an idea that is probably their they're probably focused around a, a group of people that, that get together. They meet up on the regular. They are more in person is my, is my guess. I don't know how many are online only, which I would, I would really kind of classify our group as more of an online group, right? Like we do meetups. There are some regional meetups that we do. There are some, I don't know if you call it national meetups. I don't make it sound like it's too big because it really is. A, it is a small group that, that meet up, right? I think what was it twenty so odd? Yep. Was in Phoenix. Usually, I mean, that's 20. a big meetup. That's a pretty good size it's a, meetup. It's a group of really close people, and I yeah. think that's the different dynamic. You have a big group, which right. most of those people are just. You're only as active, or as you're only as close as to how active you are in the group and right. with the legion it's much smaller it's much more of like a family and we get along with everybody and when we say there's going to be a meetup we all most of us like try to make it to those meets that's why we had such a big meet in arizona and dallas right so we had about, what, about 15 percent of our of our membership got together in phoenix about another 15 percent did in texas so uh, I'm not sure how Miami's gonna gonna play out, but almost about the same kind of numbers. Yep. But we got to know each other remotely, right? And but, we get to know people that are in, in Georgia, people that are in in um, Chicago, people that are in Washington. Now we have a new member from Washington State, and so that's you know, but being able to get online and chat with each other through Discord uh, has been has really been a, a, a game changer for me because I hardly ever go to the lounge now. Like I, 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 when I pop in there to buy a cigar every once in a while, I'll see some folks that I used to hang out with every night and I'll sit and, and chat with them and talk with them and we can catch up and that kind of thing. But, but I don't really have the same connection with them that I do my, you know, my brothers and sisters in, in the Legion. So that's really it's a different kind of, of a medium to, to meet up. So you're right. And I, um, I have my own group for my YouTube channel. And even in my group, it's not as close as it is in the Legion. I mean, I've got close to maybe three or 400 members, 
but there's only about shoot one to two, maybe 5% that are active. Not very many at all. Right. That's posting, right? Like over there. And they're posting pictures and stuff that they're doing. Res- it's responding not really... to people. Yeah. Right. You got quite a few. I'm sure you have quite a few that are scrolling through because it's popping up on their feed. Right. And so they're connecting with you in that regard. And that's fine. Right. I'm sure you've gotten people to watch your, your new videos based mm-hmm. off of, of them staying connected with you. And then even folks that we have left the Legion are, are active are yeah. at least responsive in, in that group as well, which is really kind of a cool right. thing, right? Because yeah. regardless of why or how they left, it's still neat to reach out and, and kind of see what's going on with them and, and stay in touch to some, to some degree. But it's not an every night smoke, or it's not an every week smoke kind of a thing that we're doing with with the with the Legion on Wednesday nights or Saturday nights or any other nights that right. we we pop in. And so, to me, this is like my this night. is on a hearth, right? It's every night now, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, it is every like every night. Yeah, yeah. but I, I I don't know how other group work, but I was I would suspect that all the group is the same thing because like if you think about it this way, right? When Tim has his group. It, people mostly don't know each other either. Even if they, 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 some people were shocked to find out someone was just like three blocks away, four blocks away, uh, in in the in the group. And I think you know, in a in a group of fifty thousand, sixty thousand people, I don't think they're interacting to a level where they should, or uh, to you know, to find out who, who they can hang out with. So when you say it's more like life based, I actually think I actually think they they're the, they're similar to us, except that the group is so big that there was no way to remember everybody. And because there's no way to remember everybody and you didn't have that sufficient time to talk to them individually to get to know them, you don't know them. They're strangers, right? So they don't have the same dynamic as our group does because our group is based on, um, you know, meeting each other all the time. It, there's only a right. handful of people. You only had to remember 100 names. It's not that bad, right? So mm-hmm. I, I don't know how the other group works, in that in that aspect but i know that you know th- and this is exactly the, the reason why uh shadow Summer legion is, is invite only because i want the people everybody who get into the group to know each other to get to you know to be active to talk to each other why else there's no point if you just want to post picture why don't we just use instagram i know yeah. what i do man damn right if you just if you just post the picture on instagram you get thousands and millions of people looking at it right and about- there's value in doing that, by the way. So there's, and I'm not saying you're saying anything's wrong with it, but there is value in seeing what people are smoking. Uh, you might, you might see a certain brand or certain blend. You connect mm-hmm. with that, with that. Oh wow, I smoke that too. Or okay, Start a since, conversation. since I know he's smoking that, and he's also smoking this other cigar, I might try that other one. So there's there's some good value to that. There's nothing right. wrong with that. Right, but yeah. isn't that the same function as Instagram? If I go to Instagram and I look at hashtag cigars, I'm going to find a million pictures. Sure, sure. And I'll find every cigar all of, in this in this world in that pictures, right? So it, it, it's, if you just want to do that, it's not, it's not what I think a group is. I think the group is interaction, right? Interaction, sharing the hobby, be happy with each other, and, and give each other shit. Really, that's that's very important, right? Be a friend, be a oh, family. Yeah. yeah. But the when best you just part is being a family, yeah. yeah. But when you're just posting pictures, you lack that communication. I, I think majority of the time, nine out of ten time when you post a picture, you're gonna get that's a nice smoke or a thumbs up, right? You're not gonna get the interaction, and and that's the end of the the interaction. That's pretty much the end of that interaction, right? Rarely people will type out a, a, a whole paragraph and say, oh, I smoked that last time and this is my experience on that. Because, you know, now people want uh, instant gratification. They don't have the time to type up an essay for every single cigar picture they see. And that's the problem. And, and I think that with the technology involved to the way it is right now, it really does help if people are doing this. I do know other group has Discord. So they are doing something similar, Right. And, 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 you know, if, if you're listening to this podcast, you know, I, I encourage you to get out of your comfort zone and start talking to people because cigar is probably tastes much better when you're talking to another friend. Oh, right? yeah. When you talk with a friend, you don't know what the cigar tastes like. <laughs> no, that depends. That depends. <laughs> right. And, you know, it can make a bad cigar better. 
<laughs> oh yeah, definitely. Oh yeah, could you forget about it? Right, you can make <laughs> a mess and got better. Like not even just that. Like it's like you can be smoking a cigar, talking to people, and then completely forget about the bad day that you had. Because while you're doing that, you're venting. <laughs> right.、Mm-hmm. Right. Oh yeah, we have a good time. We vent to each other all the time. So. Oh yeah, you yeah. know we have car issues, we have surgery issues, we have people who think that、issues. yeah, got mom issues, got daddy issues. <laughs> You know all kind of stuff, and they, you know it's one of those things that comes up in the in. The, it's just like when you go to a lounge, right? We sit down, your friends gotta go. How's your day? And then right, and then you gotta go. Oh my god, should, where should I start? You know,、mm-hmm. I I drove my car here. I got pulled over for nothing because my car looks good. And I walk into the shop, and 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 the the shop didn't have the cigar I want, and I actually bought I actually bought a cigar overpaid twenty bucks. Where do I start? Right, you 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 get to vent. And venting is healthy. I think cigar hobby、yeah. is what nowadays people missing. It's a place to vent because everybody yeah, have a lot of stress. Well, that's I mean,、right. and that's really what got me back into the cigar smoking. Like, I just turned turned fifty two today, right? So, <clears throat> old man, I,、um, happy birthday! <laughs> when, when I was thank you, man. So I was nineteen years old is when I probably smoked my first cigar. And it had to do with my wife's、uh, dad, father-in-law. He wasn't my father-in-law at the time, but he smoked Macanudos. He was big on the Macanudo. And so I was like, "There's something to this cigar smoking. I got to figure this out." So he, he he gave me one. I smoked it, and I I smoked a little bit. You know, as as I went to the Navy, I, I smoked a little bit, not very much, because I really didn't. You know, I was by myself. I was by myself doing.、It. I didn't really didn't go to a lounge or something like that. But、um, years ago, or years later, a lot of years later, my son's like, "Hey, there's a cigar shop right right down from where you work. What's this cigar thing all about?" So I took him up there, showed him the cigar, you know, humidor, and kind of talked a little bit about what I knew, which was very little because it, it it had changed a lot from the nineties. And、um, and that's kind of what what. Kicked off my smoking again was I'd go in because I would have a, a really stressful day、uh, in in the I, I teach so I'm in the classroom and I was becoming a, a becoming a teacher is my first few years teaching and so I'd go in I'd start talking about my job my work、uh, my kids right my personal kids right kids at home and I'd hear these guys talking about stuff and. And they 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 were like, oh yeah, I went through that, <laughs> I did that, and so you start, they, you you start to realize that people understand what you're talking about, and they had ideas, right? They they went through stuff. They here's how they managed it, and so I was able to kind of not only vent but also get some good nuggets of you know this. I'm not alone in in my journey, if you will, and so that camaraderie is what kept me stopping off. Hanging out for a few hours before I went home. So now, like you said in the group, we're able to do that on the regular. So it's a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Because obviously, there's every day there is something you can talk about, right? Every day there's something that we can vent, and and I think that's healthy, because、um, you know,、uh, not to get into too deep deep of a topic here, but mental stress is you know mental health is what、True. we lack today. In this society, mental health. So, not, not, you know what? So what? You know what I like the most, though. What do you like the most? You know, sometimes we can sit there in silence and smoke cigar and just look at each other. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's、yeah. what I、mm-hmm. love. Like, you, we could just sit there, like nobody's talking, but we just chilling. But the other day was like that.、Yeah. I ch- I jump into the chat room. You guys just silent. It's like today is quiet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But we we could do that though. I feel comfortable doing that. But, But that's the same thing as if you're sitting in a lounge, right? Like that's the same thing as if you're sitting in a lounge. You sit in a lounge, <laughs> and you, know, you you just let up a cigar. If nobody want to talk, nobody want to talk. I'm just enjoying my cigar. Just me and the cigar, right? Yeah, but it's different. It's different because I don't know those people in a lounge, and you guys are like brothers and sisters, right? And we just there's day that we just you know we just like to look at each other and smoke a cigar. That、yeah. works too. It's like it's like company, like silence company, but good family as well. 
you know? Yep. I mean, that's it. You know, that, that, that's why it's important to join the group. So, you know, for all the listeners that's listening right now, I will highly suggest you to join a group. Go find a group. They are free to join. All the group that are mm-hmm. pretty much free to join. I haven't, I don't know any group that says, hey, you got to pay membership fee to join us. I have not heard that. So go find a group, join, and talk to a few people. And chances are, you got to find a really good family. You got to find a really good friend. You got to find someone that's nearby you that you don't even know. Because cigar is such a small, small, small ring of people, right? You, it's very niche. You, some people will never find another cigar smoker that they will get to know for a long time. In fact, we don't go around and tell people we smoke cigars, right? No. Nope. Unless somebody asks. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. You don't go around and say, and I got, you know, put two sticks of cigar in your in your front pocket and just walk around. It's like, mm-hmm. yeah, I smoke cigar, guys. See how badass I am. No, we don't do no, that. People get people right. get surprised when they know I smoke cigars. Now, so. here's another here's another element to this. Another part of this that I think is very interesting. So while I'm sitting in the lounge, talk, you know, smoking these cigars. You walk in the humidor and there's like hundreds of cigar, different kind of cigars to smoke. In the group that I was at, at the cigar lounge, there were very few that wanted to talk about the cigar, which blew my mind, like totally blew my mind. Like what? Like if you started talking about what, what you tasted, like different notes you might be getting off of it or whatever. They look. They listen to you for a little bit, but eventually they start giving you shit about it, right? It what do you mean by to do you, that? What do you mean oh, by giving you shit about it? Oh, giving you shit like, uh, and they just kind of make fun of like, oh, I, I, I get cocoa and I get chocolate and I get you know, and, well, and, and get crayon. Kind of, yeah, or whatever. But they <laughs> laugh about it. They laugh like, like maybe they weren't getting it or something, and but, but they just wanted to come in and just bullshit and smoked a cigar. They really didn't want to talk about cigars. Yeah. But then there would always be one or two that you knew you could have that conversation with, which totally blew my mind because I felt like, dude, if you're buying like a $10 cigar, don't you want to know what you're tasting off this thing? Don't you want to like understand it, right? So when I started listening to like YouTube videos of, of these reviewers talking about what they're getting off of it, uh, understanding maybe like these cigars that you cannot find in that humidor, but you can maybe buy online or go somewhere else. Then, you know, that I was adventuring into a different area of of smoking. What I like about the shadow smokers legion and, and other, and I'm sure other groups are very similar is that they're willing to have those conversations about it. It's not, it's not such a bad thing uh, to, to to talk about cigars, to kind of geek out, I guess, geek out on cigars, right? Kind of be a cigar yeah. nerd, if you will, and um, yep. and that's something you know, and that really is what has caused me to spend more time on the Legion than I do a local lounge, because you never know really who you're going to to catch. I mean, they're good for conversation, and we had some really cool conversations. In fact, we had a lot of fun mm-hmm. in the cigar lounge. We would sit there and we would bet on the next car that's going to come through the into the parking lot. If it was going to be a white car, if it was going to be a black car, if it was going to be like we bet a dollar, like we like okay, let's go get a dollar. Uh, I think it's going to be a, a a silver car. And, and by the way, silver and gray, those are two different colors. And so you had to like, get that figured out. Metallic silver and gray. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. If you go with blue, you know, like what color blue? Are you talking light blue? Are you talking about dark blue? You know, kind of a stuff. And we we would bet on that kind of stuff. We would bet on the over and under of who. would when somebody would walk in the lounge, like, uh, when do you think Mike's going to get here, man? Do you think he's going to get here at six or after six? And so we'd bet a dollar on that. So there was a lot of fun, fun activities <laughs> that we'd kind of, kind of do with that. One time somebody brought in a gumball machine, right? Those, those big old, yeah, the big old gumball machine. Like, you know, they, you pay a quarter for the gumball and, mm-hmm. and the yeah. money goes to some kind of fund, you know, to help the, muscular dystrophy or whatever, you know? And um, I was like, hey, man, let's, let's bet on, on the color gumball that comes out of the machine next. <laughs> so here we are. <laughs> so here we are, we're, we're getting quarters 
the, to bet a dollar to see with the gumball. And then, and then <laughs> who, who's going to eat the gumball, right? <laughs> you start seeing people trying to eat the damn gumballs. So, I mean, there's a lot of, we had a lot of fun, a lot, a lot of little fun little games like that that we'd kind of play around with. Y'all, do y'all remember the that game, uh, Shut the Box? You know, we have like the no one. Th- yeah, there's, and actually, uh, there's a cigar that's called Shut the Box now that actually come the, the box has a shut the box game in it where you have oh, all the yeah. numbers, you roll the dice and then you, you, you try to get the combination of dice to, to knock down the numbers. And if you can knock down all the numbers and you roll, then you shut the box, you know, uh, we would do that. And that was a lot of fun. So there, it, those things I do miss because we're not able to do that in discord or on the lives and things like that. We're not, we're not, that's not an activity we do, but when it comes to talking about cigars, what I'm investing my money on, you know, hands down, this this group is, it, it affords that a lot more. So pretty grateful for that. And I think that's the platform, right? So when you're in the shop, there's a lot of people that's not comfortable talking about cigar and their flavor because they are afraid that, you know, they, they say they're wrong or something like that. When, when you're in a situation where you go um, in a group that's talk about specific cigars, they feel like they can be educated. They feel like they can talk about what they taste and not just like, hey, do you like the cigar? Yeah, I like it. Or oh, I hate it, right? They can say, I kind of taste this and that. And then others can try that because they don't feel yeah. like they're being ridiculed in front of other people, right? But when you're in the cigar shop, it's like, hey, I taste carrot. Everybody's like, are you nuts? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they, and they, they, they laugh at you. Right. Yeah, so it's, and, and I think that's what I, it is. I laugh at I laugh at Tony when you say that. <laughs> yeah, but but that's yeah, what but, it is. Carrot. Yeah, but cinnamon. Have you ever have you ever gotten cinnamon off a cigar? Yeah, yeah. yeah cinnamon. Most, I get a lot. Most of the time, I don't know what I'm tasting. To tell the truth, I'm just I'm guessing all the time. Oh, you are. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What's the name of your pot? What's the name of your uh, channel? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what it is, right? Uh, we, we'll have another subject about this uh, uh, in a later show where we can talk about uh, flavor in the cigars because everybody tastes it yeah. differently. So it, there's, there's mm-hmm. no way to have, uh, you know, a definitive thing that says, hey, I taste this, but, you know, it definitely had to taste this. You no, know, there's, there's some people taste other things, some people don't. You know, no, it really... There's one, and, and the palate one flavor really, everybody gets. And the, the, the palate really depends on how much the person has taste. Right? If the person never tastes clove before, you tell the person that you should have taste clove, and they're like, what's clove taste like? Right? If somebody have never yeah, tasted, yeah. I don't know, this person might be allergic to cocoa and never tastes cocoa. And it's like, you should taste this thing. This thing tastes like chocolate bar. And they're like, I don't taste anything. Right? Sometimes it tastes like better like cocaine. So. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't know. I never tried cocaine. Yeah. So, uh, wow. you know, right? <laughs> Right? That's all um, you, bro. That's that's all you. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, if you guys watch his show and you hear cocaine, that's yeah. what it is. It tastes like Arnold well, Schwarzenegger's there's armpit. One... <laughs> <laughs> there's one flavor that everybody get is tobacco. So that's one thing. You know, that's the number one yeah. taste people have to get through before they taste anything, right? Because when exactly. you first smoke cigars, that's all you got to taste. And a lot of people is gonna go like. Oh, I tried it and I don't know what I taste because every cigar tastes the same. You, you never heard that? Like people say, I think all the yeah. cigars taste kind of the same. Yeah, when, when a cigar gets same. a cigar, another one. Yeah. Because they ignore all the other flavor and they kind of just kind of got that tobacco and all they taste was tobacco. Yeah, all the cigars got to taste the same. Either that or they all buy the same kind of cigar. It's like, you know, this guy only smoked Connecticut and thinking that Connecticut is going to taste different, right? So we have those. <laughs> so in, in when you have a different setting, I guess, you know, you, you become a different person, right? When you're on a, there's a lot of people that's not comfortable to be on video. So when we had a video chat, you know, they're, they're quiet and stuff like that, but then eventually they open up and they start talking about a lot of things that we didn't even know about. Right. Right. You yeah, know? That's, that's why it's good to get in a legion or a group and then uh, get to know people. And then you expand your horizon on everything that come with it. Yeah. And, 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 you know, knowledge, is out there to be shared, right? And this is one of the reasons why we had this podcast is that we can share some of our knowledges, talk about things that most people might disagree. You know, we, we will have one episode talking about plume. I guarantee it. Oh, it, yeah. That's yeah. going to oh, happen. Oh, yeah. If it's Mulder, <laughs> if it's plume. Yeah, we will have a... a, a and I have, I have a good explanation for that. I really do. 
So, you know, we, we can have an episode talking about that. I, I know if a lot of people want to listen to that, let us know. We'll have that earlier. If not, we'll just pick a good day. It's like, you know what? Today, let's talk about Plume. <laughs> right? And that yeah, will be a heated conversation. The industry real fast. <laughs> you know, this whole industry, I will say a lot of things. I shouldn't even say that, but I, I think a lot of cigar shop owners don't know cigar. Right? You really I, think so? Yeah. That's that's another subject, I think. I think that, and they and they're also they're on the hook for whatever the hell they bought. Yeah. So right. they 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 just bought yeah. these cigars. They bought a crap load of cigars, and now they've got cigars that are drowning in in humidification, which is creating mold. And like, what are they going to do? Throw it all away? Like <laughs> they're going to try and, to. And humidification is another myth that we'll be talking about too, because yeah. that thing is. I think it bothers a lot of new cigar owners. Yes. Right? Yes. Uh, new ones, yeah. That, they go too, they think about it too much. They, they think about too oh, much yeah. cigar owners. So then they, you know, like, for example, like I can talk about Bovida packs and how to recharge them and or whether you need them and all that kind of stuff. If I'm sitting in that lounge and some cat comes in to buy a Bovida pack and I'm like, Hey, dude, man, you know, you can just like recharge that thing. I got an owner that's looking at me, like giving me the, you know, daggers, right? <laughs> <'Cause it's, laughs> like you don't want to hear about it, right? So there is, yeah. you know, so the conversations can be different whenever you're away from that kind of environment because you don't want to be disrespectful to the owner either, right? You want to, be, hey, you know, you can buy that cheaper if you buy it, blah, blah, blah. And so or you go, you go to this other shop kind of a thing. And this but, is why uh, I think our podcast is going to get us into so much trouble. Every yeah, every cool. cigar industry is going to hate us, which is great. Which is great. That's so, right. which, yeah. Which yeah like you want to hear thing. the truth? You want to hear the secret behind the scene? You know, this is the channel you want to listen to because we got yeah, all but this that is our, And this is our truth, right? This is our, our experience. So it can it, we can say what we need to say about it, what we want to say about it. We might be wrong. But then again, but we might right be right. For, but how we uh, how we go about doing it, right? So, mm -hmm. and I think a lot of people will realize, you know, once they see things differently, they might see another side of it, right? Because there's always that is cigar is a business, cigar is a business, right? So there is a business side of it, there's a consumer side of it, and there's people who don't care about it, the side of it, right? And, and there are people who are living that life side of it, right? For like, for example, we have a member Michael, little guy cigar shop. He, I think before he became a cigar shop owner, he would see things very differently. And now that he's a cigar shop owner, now he sees cigar totally different. He sees how things are totally different. He sees the industry. He see the in and outs. He see behind the scene how those other cigar owners are. You know, life is different when you are when you put a different shoes on. Life is different. So I think that you know this podcast is gonna do a lot of good for those people who want to know. Uh, other side of the story well you know and and, and obviously you got to make your own judgment what you got to listen to and what you got to take two cents you now two pinch of salt to go with that you know uh information so anyways yeah, uh, we, the day. we are about an hour in so we got to cut off here and i hope everybody enjoyed that small conversation we got and, and and we have more coming and we've got to do this once a week every week hopefully and we'll release these episodes on, I believe, on the weekend. We might we might release on the weekdays. We would choose a better day for everybody. I think most people will listen to on the weekend, so we release mm -hmm. them on the weekends, and we uh, and, and that way everybody can enjoy it. So make sure to subscribe to these um, podcasts and share it with your friends, and you know, email us uh, if you have any suggestion comments. Or you know, topic that you really want to know about, and we can consider it and put on the podcast for you. So I'll say this about about that. You know, like so today, I was we we're in the in the travel chat, and I was asking idea. You know, what are some ideas of topics that you think would would work? You know, on the on the podcast, and and man, they were just they're they're giving me ideas, man. So a lot of the ideas, I won't say all of them, but you know, quite a few ideas popped up on the on the list based off of feedback that the members are giving. So, um, yeah, so there's going to be some good topics coming up for sure. Oh yeah. I saw the list. There's a lot of good topics we could talk about. Mm -hmm. So but I don't know, the, the, the tribal hangout, man, I'm telling you, it could be bad. Nah. <laughs>
<laughs> we'll find out. We'll find out soon enough. Okay. We're easy. So, Tra- yeah. Travels. Travels easy. Travels easy. We do it every day. <laughs> so. So that's it for the show. We'll see you next time. Make sure to subscribe. We'll talk to you soon. Bye, guys. You've been listening to the In the Shadows podcast. There's nothing like a fine cigar, and that's our passion. And on the show, we'll talk about everything and anything cigars. And you know what happens when you get a bunch of guys together smoking cigars. The conversations go on and on. And that is what this show is all about. We hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to like, rate, and review. Remember, the live show is every Wednesday and Saturday at 9 p.m. Eastern. And don't forget you can find cigar reviews at youtube.com slash soy sauce assassin. Wishing you long ashes. We'll see you next time on In the Shadows Podcast.